The Committee for State Security, also known as the KGB. The KGB, the Soviet Union's intelligence and secret service, was established on 13th of March 1954 and was the main security agency of the Soviet Union until 3rd of December 1991 when it was dissolved. During the Cold War period, which started after the Second World War, the KGB emerged as the most successful intelligence agency in the world. Let's examine the KGB against CIA in more detail, which went down in history with its successful operations, especially during the Cold War period. If we briefly touch on Russia's intelligence organizations, the first intelligence activities in Russian history started with the establishment of the secret police organization called Oprichnina in the 16th century during the reign of Ivan the Terrible. The Russian intelligence activities, which developed continuously over time, were generally working to control and suppress the opponents against the regime. With the outbreak of the First World War, Oprichnina increased its pressure and threats to silence this opposition while committing countless murders. The Bolsheviks who took over the country with the October Revolution closed the Secret Service completely after sharing all the dirty work of Oprichnina with the public. Realizing the importance of the intelligence service in the first days of the Russian Civil War, Lenin founded the first Soviet intelligence service, the Cheka, on 20th of December 1917. Felix Georgiansky, of Polish origin, who played an important role in the establishment of the Cheka, was appointed by Lenin as the first head of the organization. Georgiansky, who immediately started working, strengthened his intelligence network by opening many Cheka branches all over the country. Then, with the decree he sent to the branches, he ordered that those who were against the Bolsheviks should be flagged and that all information should be transferred to the center on a daily basis. In another decree he issued a few days later, he ordered those who disobey or oppose the authority of the Bolshevik government to be caught and handed over to the revolutionary courts. The Cheka, whose purpose was to gather intelligence, and ensure the security of the state soon started to turn into a terrible organization that acted far beyond this authority and destroyed all opposition. Especially when the assassination attempt on Lenin in 1918 strengthened the hand of Cheka, the organization gained the authority to arrest and kill suspects without the permission of any court, making itself felt in every field from censoring newspapers and magazines to putting dissidents in concentration and labor camps, Cheka extended its field of activity to Turkestan, Ukraine and Azerbaijan. In the days when Soviet Russia began to occupy the Democratic Republic of Azerbaijan in April 1920, the Cheka also infiltrated the territory of Azerbaijan. The members of the organization who started to execute those who resisted and rebelled against the Red Army without question killed 15,000 of Azerbaijani citizens in just one month. The members of the organization didn't hesitate to shoot those they suspect, regardless of whether they are guilty or not guilty, young or old, women or children. After the end of the Russian Civil War and the official establishment of the Soviet Union in 1922, Vladimir Lenin began to feel uncomfortable with the Cheka's notoriety. He found the easiest way to destroy this notoriety was to shut down the Cheka. Thus, on February 6, 1922, the Cheka, which caused tens of thousands of people to die, was officially closed. Although the state political directory, in short, GPU, was established in place of the Chica. It didn't last long either. In place of the GPU, which was shut down a year later, the Joint State Political Directory, the short name OGPU, was established on December 15, 1923. Unlike the Chica, the OGPU didn't have the overarching task of judging, interrogating, and shooting opponents. The power of this structure was limited to following up, catching, and heading over those who meant the security of the state to the relevant courts. 
All anti-communists within the country's borders had already been purged almost completely. That's why Soviet leader Stalin ordered the OGPU to expand abroad. With the instructions they received, the Soviet agents went after the dissidents who had fled abroad within the framework of the trust operation between 1924-1925. Soviet agents contacted Sidney Riley, a prominent anti-communist leader who was also a British intelligence officer. Soviet agents introduced themselves as anti-communists, convincing them that Riley's friends with whom he had fought in the Russian Civil War needed him. Riley, who tried to sneak into the Soviet Union via Finland in September 1925 to save his friends, was caught and executed in a short time. While this event had wide repercussions in both the British and Soviet press, it was also a great prestige for the OGPU. So OGPU's popularity increased and started to do more operations abroad after this incident. The most well known of these operations was the Xinjiang War between the Soviet Union and China. Shen Shikai, the governor of China's Xinjiang region, sent a letter to Stalin in 1932 asking for military assistance against the Chinese Republic. In January 1934, while the Chinese forces were besieging Urumqi, the OGPU's force of about 7,000 men clashed with the Chinese forces. As a result of these clashes that continued until April, the Soviet-backed Xinjiang army was able to push back the Chinese forces. Although the OGPU successfully ended its mission, it was shut down by Stalin in July 1934 for an unknown reason. In its place, the NKVD, which will operate both in the field of public order and in the field of intelligence, was established. The founding purpose of the NKVD, which means the People's Commissariat of Internal Affairs, became clear with the start of the Great Purge operation carried out by Stalin in 1936. The purge was carried out by the Soviet secret police themselves in order to consolidate Joseph Stalin's power over the party and to neutralize Leon Trotsky and other political opponents within the party. The arbitrary arrest, trial and execution processes carried out by NKVD agents continued for about two years. It ended in 1938 when Stalin declared that the Soviet Union was cleared of internal enemies. Historians estimate the death toll during the Great Purge to be roughly between 600,000 and 1.2 million. By 1940, as Stalin ordered the NKVD to kill his exiled rival Trotsky, Soviet agents arrived in Mexico City, where Trotsky was staying. Disguised as a journalist, Soviet agent Raymond Mercader went to Trotsky's house under the pretext of doing an interview. There, Mercader, who badly injured Trotsky by hitting him with an axe, was detained by Trotsky's bodyguards. Trotsky died one day after the assassination due to the wound he received. The Ukrainian nationalist leader Yevhen Konovalets was assassinated in Rotterdam, the Netherlands and the former Russian general against Stalin, Yevgeny Mila, in Paris, as a result of the operations organized by the NKVD agents. After the beginning of the World War II, the NKVD began to collaborating with the Nazi police force, the Gestapo. In the meanwhile, at the beginning of the war, representatives of the NKVD and the Gestapo met and negotiated the partition of the Polish territory. While the cooperation continued until 1941, the Soviet Union handed over hundreds of German communists to Gestapo. After the Nazis attacked the Soviet Union in 1941, Soviet intelligence agents were tasked with killing the retreating Red Army soldiers and sometimes carried out numerous sabotage missions in the areas that were captured by the Nazis. In addition, the most brutal act of Soviet agents who carried out countless extrajudicial killings during the war was the Katyn Massacre, 
in which 22,000 Polish POWs were killed. The NKVD, which had a very bad reputation after the Cheka, was completely closed in 1946 after the end of the World War II. In its place, the MGB, which means the Ministry for State Security, with the same staff as the NKVD, was established. However, it soon became clear that only the name of the institution had changed and the working method remained the same. Tasked with suppressing the uprisings in the Baltic states in the early 1950s, MGB agents carried out numerous executions in these countries. The MGB, which didn't change its working principle until the death of Stalin in 1953, was completely closed in 1954 by the new Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. In its place, the KGB, the most famous secret police service of the Soviet Union, was established under the chairmanship of Ivan Alexandrovich. Which stands for Committee for State Security, was to prevent any threat to the Soviet Union and the Communist Party. Its mission abroad was to carry out activities necessary for espionage, terrorism, coward actors and the continuation of Soviet policies. The first foreign mission of the KGB, which was to be very influential during the Cold War period, was the organization of the Warsaw Pact, established in 1955 against NATO. The KGB members, who went to the satellite states of the Soviet Union, Romania, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Hungary, Poland and Albania, held talks with the governments and played a role in the establishment of the Warsaw Pact on 14th of May 1955. The following year, the path of KGB agents fell on Hungary. On October 23rd, 1956, the march organized by the students in Budapest, the capital of Hungary, to present a petition to the government received wide support from the public. Peaceful demonstrations suddenly turned into an uprising when the police opened fire on the crowd upon the order of Hungarian leader Erno Noguero to disperse the march. With the support of the Hungarian army in this uprising, which was supported by the CIA, the government lost control in a short time. Eventually, the ghetto government collapsed and the rebels brought Negi, a reformist, to power. In his speech, Negi announced that the single party era was over and Hungary would leave the Warsaw Pact and be freed from Soviet control. Upon this development, while the Soviet army occupied Budapest, President Negi was arrested and executed in a short time. Meanwhile, KGB agents replaced Negi with the pro-Soviet Janos Kadar as Hungary's new leader. All the armed resistance started against the Soviet troops throughout the country. This resistance was suppressed in a short time after the point operations of the KGB agents. While large-scale arrests were made in the country after order was restored, KGB chief Ivan Serov personally supervised the normalization of the country. When the dates showed 1961, the CIA and the KGB faced each other this time in Cuba. In this incident, which went down in the history as the invasion of the Bay of Pigs, a group of anti-communists supported by the CIA attempted a coup to overthrow the Fidel Castro regime. On the morning of April 15, 1961, eight bombers painted in Cuban Air Force colors bombed the airports in Havana and Santiago. These planes, flown by anti-communists as Cuban soldiers, were specially prepared by the CIA for the coup attempt. However, the KGB, acting before the CIA, warned the Fidel Castro government in advance and prevented possible loss of life. When Fidel Castro made a statement the next day and blamed the United States for this attack, all the planned air strikes had to be cancelled. Having eliminated the possibility of an aerial attack, the CIA decided to try the attack from the sea this time. 
At midnight on 17th of April, two CIA landing craft entered the Bay of Pigs off the southern coast of Cuba. There were a total of 1,300 armed Cuban exiles, a large number of ammunition and tanks on the ships. Bloody clash took place between the Putschitz, who tried to land for three days, and the Cuban army, which fought not to land them. During these conflicts, the superiority passed into the hands of the Cuban army thanks to the intelligence and weapon support provided by the KGB agents. The invasion of the Bay of Pigs, which continued until 21st of April, resulted in the victory of the Cuban army at the noon of the same day. While the Cuban army, which captured 1,202 Putsche soldiers and two CIA agents, declared victory, seven Putsche soldiers and two CIA officers were executed on the same day. Thus, after Hungary, the KGB won one more victory against the CIA in Cuba. In 1968, when Alexander Dubček came to power in Czechoslovakia, which had a very tough economic time, he promised his people to make a series of reforms. In the first months of his presidency, he gave wider freedoms to Czechoslovak press and heralded that Czechoslovakia would now switch to a multi-party system. While these developments were met with a reaction in the Soviet Union, KGB agents took action and came to Czechoslovakia. During a series of talks between KGB agents and Dubček in early August, Dubček promised to abandon some reforms. However, this would not have satisfied the KGB, as the Army of the Soviet Union and other Warsaw Pact member countries invaded Czechoslovakia on the night of 20th of August 1968. While Dubček was arrested and taken to Moscow, the people of Czechoslovakia resisted this coup. While the Soviet Union didn't want the country to be dragged into a civil war and spread to other Eastern Bloc peoples, had to make an agreement with Dubček, and Dubček was reinstated for a while. However, this was a distraction tactic. Meanwhile, the KGB agents who went down to the streets arrested the leaders of the demonstrators one by one, weakening the popular resistance. Dubček, who was dismissed again in January 1970, was appointed as the ambassador to Turkey. Let's come to the KGB's role in Soviet Union's intervention in Afghanistan. In 1978, President Mohammed Daoud Khan, who wanted to get rid of Soviet control, initiated a series of reforms. Disturbed by this, Moscow carried out a military coup against Davut Khan through the KGB agents it sent to Afghanistan and replaced him with the pro-Soviet Nur Muhammad Taraki. After a while, a power struggle began between President Taraki, who changed the country's name to the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan, and Prime Minister Hafizullah Amin. During this struggle, when Taraki was assassinated on Amin's order and died, the Moscow administration took action. Due to the anti-communist protests that started during Amin's period, Moscow intervened in Afghanistan in December 1979, claiming that Amin was a CIA agent. When Hafizullah Amin died as a result of an assassination organized by KGB agents, the Afghan-Soviet war, which would last for nine years, broke out. As a result of this war, nearly two million Afghan civilians would be killed and the Soviet Union would lose 15,000 soldiers. Let's come to the last mission of the KGB before it was shut down. Mikhail Gorbachev, who came to the head of the Soviet Union in 1985, declared that he would provide transparency in the country by launching a series of reforms. Launched a campaign against corruption, improved relations with the United States, made disarmament agreements and destroyed long and medium range missiles in the territory of the Soviet Union. He established closer relations with the West in foreign policy and didn't speak out for the unification of East Germany and West Germany. These softening policies led to nationalist and independence uprisings in the member states of the Soviet Union. A group of Soviet leaders, including KGB chief Vladimir Kruchkov, 
were disturbed by the situation and began to plan to overthrow Gorbachev in a coup. Taking advantage of Gorbachev's vacation in Crimea with his family, the Putschitz asked KGB chief Kruchkov to take action. Several KGB agents neutralized Gorbachev's summer resistance by cutting it off from the outside world. Then the coup plan was put into practice. However, the CIA informed about the situation in advance and conveyed the situation to American President Bush. Since Bush could not reach Gorbachev, he called Russian President Boris Yeltsin and talked about the coup attempt. Boris Yeltsin, who called the people to the streets by calling on the army not to participate in the coup, prevented the coup attempt from increasing. KGB chief Khrushchev, who made a 100% increase in the salaries of his agents, ordered the KGB special forces to attack the Soviet assembly but was cancelled as a result of KGB agents' refusal to do so. Realizing that the coup will fail, the head of the KGB and the Putschitz accompanying him wanted to go to Gorbachev's summer residence, but Gorbachev refused to meet with them. The Putschitz, who set out for Moscow without getting what they wanted, were detained and arrested as soon as they landed at the Moscow airport. After this event, while the members of the Union declared their independence one by one, the Soviet Union was dissolved at the end of the process and the KGB, the legendary intelligence service of the Soviets, was thus closed.